righty or lefty? Lefty. All right, so if you're lefty, um, the arc of your hand naturally goes this way. So mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a pretty big deal because you want to then draw people's portraits um, when you can. Um, you want to draw them looking to that side because the arc of your hand goes with it. If you're lefty and you try to do a portrait this way, um, it makes it really difficult because you're fighting the natural uh, curve, like the pivot point of your wrist. Yeah. So um, that's like, that's like a, a little tip. Um, okay, so the first thing that I do when I, when I begin to draw is I get, I get like something like very smoky. Like I get something like um, not, I, I don't want crisp, sharp, very hard pencils. Like I don't want that at all. Um, when I start to draw, I want, I want to like something like hazy that I can just map out the big masses with. And so I go like this right here. And as I'm doing that, I'm just, I'm really looking side to side. So I'm lining up the shoulder, I'm lining up the elbow, I'm lining up the top of the head. And I always try to get, if, if life allows you to, try to get the subject and your piece of paper aligned. It's just, it's just it aids you if you have it side to side. Um, compare it to this right here. If, let's say you wanna reduce it, and now you're in the realm this is called comparative, right? So it's just, it's a very important thing to, to hold on to. Uh, comparative, sorry, that is so sloppy. Okay. Um, this, we'll call it sight size. It's, it's not truly sight size, but the reason why I'm using this term right now is because I will, like, why, why not like take advantage of every trick in the book? Um, if you're, especially if you're doing a demo in front of people, like um, I, I avail myself of everything. So I am right now going like all over the piece. My eyes are running left and right and I'm going like this and I'm running lines across where her eye is, bottom of her nose, does the chin line up? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if, if you can jump into that, go for it. <laughs> um, it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. So, um, going from the big, like smoky masses and massing everything in huge, uh, the next thing I do is in my mind, um, I am constantly running a, um, like a, a system of what I call like it's, it's grid lines, but the grid lines are, um, I think I can show it to you here, uh, drawing guide. There we are. So the, this drawing guide allows me to, to flip my eye back and forth and see if I'm within, like, um, if, I'm, if, if I'm within line for like, let's say the front of the head. So mm -hmm. the front of the nose and the forehead hit the, almost hit the stomach, almost. So in the front of my piece right here, I'm going to want to go, right down like that and make sure the stomach is just a little bit beyond it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm always, always using uh, mental grid lines. They don't exist in real life, but I, I force them to exist for my drawings. So like I can already see some trouble that I'm in with my painting, with my drawing, because the, I have the neck right here. Uh, it would almost be like her neck being right there. It's way too close. And so I have to immediately establish, okay, the chin set back a little bit right here and the neck is going to be thicker. So you see how I'm using that, that whole idea of, of a grid to see where everything's lining up. So, um, that right there helps me just lay in the big block of the head and how it meets the rib cage. So the next thing I'm going to do, is I'm gonna to try to really reduce her to basic, basic um, form, uh, basic, uh, sorry, masses. And so I turn her head into nothing but a big black and white cookie. That's all it is. 
because it kind of looks like that. Like, I mean, her head literally does split right down the middle. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Yeah. So and if you, if you have questions, uh, just throw them at me the whole entire time. Don't wait until, uh, I'm done blabbering, <laughs> but throw them at me as we go. Sure. Okay. So I use hair in portraits like crazy. Uh, some like purist artists are like kind of of the mindset where they're like, I don't use hair, you know, I go right for the face, the face is the most important thing. I use whatever the heck nature gives me that can carve out something with ease. So in, in her portrait, the background is really dark and it makes her face feel so much lighter. So guess what I'm going to already do, even though it sounds like absurd. So that's really dark back there. Um, I'm already gonna get my biggest, like you could literally do this, Megan, with your hand and just a pounce of charcoal. Like they, um, I'm sure you have access to like a ton of charcoal, like, but you can also get um, a little, um, like a little jar of charcoal. They sell it on Amazon mm -hmm. and it's just pulverized charcoal. It's just powder. Um, and you can just go like almost as if like you have like a piece you like put it into your hand and you actually go and you yeah. rub it over the background. So now can't you see her face so much better where it's like, it's that dark on like on light play. So now I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to attack, let's say body right here. And I'm running those, those lines like Robert Beverly Hale. He's like my hero. Um, he calls these the hunter's crosshairs, where you're able to see everywhere that you look, you're able to see horizontals and verticals running everywhere. So I'm checking this negative space right over here and it feels pretty good. It's like, it's okay. It's not like perfect. Um, so now that I have those big masses in, now it's time for me to switch over and get a little bit more definite. And so I start, typically, I start with a front plane and there's a trick. So there's, there's actually a profile drawing trick that you can do where um, I'm going to expand the canvas to show it to you. And you can, you can do this as an exercise in your own, Megan, and it will really help you. Um, like artists through the centuries all had tricks and nowadays we're like, no, I'm doing like this pure expression of form and I don't want to be stilted and stunted by conventions. But it's, it, it is amazing to me how many jazz players are like, they have like tricks that they pass along to each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So check out this trick. It's so now a third of the way down and a third of the way down. Um, I just place markers mentally. Then I go and I put in a triangular mass right here, just like that. Now, right across in the brow ridge, we're assuming that the um, head is perfectly level. You can tilt this any which way you please. I put an upside down triangle and I just shade that in lightly. Now let's zoom in even a little bit more yet. Now underneath, I bring the mouth a little bit further forward and I kind of make like just a shape somewhat like that. Mm -hmm. And so this, this for me already is aiding, like I already have that whole idea of a third of the way down, a third of the way down. Um, I already have something to work with mm -hmm. when I jump back to looking at like life. So, okay. So now you can start carving in and using this information and seeing the negative space so I'm going to go like this. I'm going to clip it. So I won't narrate every single step, but check out what happens. It's actually, it's actually pretty cool. So I just came up with this hundred percent on my own. Um, but I use it all the time and I kind of use it for a lot of things in nature that I observe and look at how a face emerges from that. So if you want to, you can just keep playing with it where you're like, well, I don't like those features. 
Um, so just move the whole jaw in so it becomes less prominent. But you see how I'm like using that negative space. Mm-hmm. And the jaw line runs like this. So we can keep going with it. Oftentimes the eye seen from the side is almost like a triangular slice. And now you can just carve out the ear. Whoops. This right here. And so that's someone with a really long, <laughs> a really long mouth. So, <laughs> um, and again, like modify it as you see fit so that the proportions are harmonious or not harmonious. Like Leonardo da Vinci loved drawing disgusting, gnarled old men in profile because he loved, there was a perfection in that imperfection. Mm-hmm. All right, so. Here's your ear. Um, so I came to this drawing with a preconceived template and I foisted it upon the drawing and it works. Um, you're able to keep chipping away at stuff like this. And do you see how it's actually getting like a likeness? Yeah. Or not a likeness, it doesn't look anything like our model. I'm, I'm just saying it has a believable mess. And then you can go in and you can put in the back of the head. So. When I do portrait demos um, in front of classrooms, I oftentimes choose a perfect profile. Um, and I don't draw someone dead on ever because that's like artistic doom. Like it's very hard to get that right when it's front lit. Mm-hmm. So I have all these preconceived ideas that I just bring right to the model. And so I could just kind of like, almost like drop and drag right in. So, um, Let's do that over here now. So a third of the way down and a third of the way down. Um, I'll just go like this. And let me know if, let me know if I'm like not narrating it enough or if I'm narrating it too much. If you, it's better to just see me draw, just let me know. Um, so I've done all this like kind of like the slow way. Part of me is tempted to go back um, to start a new drawing so you could without narrating it so you could see me do this like quicker. Do you, do you want to see that so that you could do that in front of your students? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, okay, cool. So let me, I'm just going to select this and I'm going to, you know what, I'll just erase like that cool all right so let me show you how i map that out really fast all right here we go cue the cheesy music (laughs) um also let me get rid of these grid lines because they drive me insane if i keep them on there uh
I'm gonna mute myself. I think you can hear my roommates making fun of me in the background. <laughs> oh, no, I, I didn't even know anyone was there. I couldn't hear anything. I think they literally said, I'm Megan and I have an art class. <laughs> What'd she say? Oh, what did they say? I heard them literally say, I'm Megan and I have an art class. <laughs> mute that for a second. I, uh, all my buddies, we all from all over America, one guy is in the Air Force, um, and he flies like really, he's like really elite, like he flies for generals, um, and he does like missions into Afghanistan from England, like he is like ridiculous. My other buddy, and we all went to school together, so my other buddy um, is in finance, the other one is just academically brilliant, he went to Georgetown. Um, it's my brother, Sean, my brother, Chris, who's a cop. Um, and we all get on the phone and we just spend like three or four hours every Monday night, just ripping each other to shreds and laughing our heads off. It's so much fun. So I think I'm like imagining like how I would be approaching this. And I think one place that I typically get stuck is like worrying that once I lay in like a form, I'm not gonna be able to change it later. Like I'm worried about it being so wrong that it'll mess up all the other parts of it. Like right now, if I was where you were at, I would probably be messing with the neck like so much and like the angle of the head. Like how would you, like say right now you figured out one of the angles was wrong. Like how would you? Oh, can you can you hold on one second? I have a delivery from the post office. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry, they just walked. Um, I didn't have to sign. I thought I had to sign it. No. Okay, cool. Um, so you were saying you'd be working on the neck? Is that what you said? Yeah, like, I'm not saying that, like, it even off or anything. I'm just saying, like, if I was drawing this myself, I would probably get so worried about all the angles being right first that, like, if I got to this point, I would probably just freeze up worrying that while I'm laying in this face, I'm just going to have to move everything later. Sure. Um, the, th that's definitely a concern. Um, and the reason, the, the, the reason why I'm not like too concerned, um, maybe comes with the confidence of doing it often. Um, so that's not such a, that's not a real consolation. Like you could say, well, like, well, thanks kid. That helped me. Didn't help me at all. Um, but like, I know, I know how malleable the masses are. Um, so if I get something that's radically off, I mean, it literally is just like a heartbeat where I just like, I just grab, I just grab the other side of it and I just carve. Like, so what I mean by that is, uh, let's going back to that whole idea of like, let's say using the background, um, going back to the whole idea of using the background to, to carve masses. If you know that your background is super, super flexible. So let me get, we need, you can get like, now this is, what you're looking at right here is the side of Megan's hand or it's your entire palm and you're going in and you're massing everything in and you know that that's going to be that value or um, let's hop over to here. Now I'm going to do something incorrect. Ready? I'm going to go in and I'm going to go too dark over here. I mean, uh, I'm going to change the shape. I'm doing this all completely wrong. So I'm coming in too much. And I look at it, I'm like, oh, uh, I, um, I dropped, you know, some visual lines and those lines, the back of her scapula right here, the back, um, it's supposed to be like further out or like even like in, like it just doesn't really matter. Um, if you are working in such a way where you carve with the background and the foreground at the same time, um, you can move things quick and you gain like a real freedom if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So let's say, okay, let's move it back out again. And I don't even, I, honestly, I don't even know where the right position is because I'm not there yet. But now I just carved back out 
and I'll go back in and I'll see, I'll check out and see if, if it lines up because I'm using positive and negative space to carve. So I don't, it's not a line issue. It's, it's really, it's very much an issue of positive and negative mm -hmm. and just using those to carve each other. So now let's say, um, let's say I did something wrong right there and the arm is too far in and the arm has to come out like a little bit more. If you have paint, if you have um, wh whatever it might be, whether it's paint or graphite or charcoal, but if you're working and you're doing a demo and you have that paint out and you're, you're letting the masses go, like it's almost like an AB, AB where you go here and then you're back here and then you're back here and you're back there. You gain like a lot of freedom in drawing because you're not so um, beholden. You're not like so like terrified of getting some wrong lines. So is this helping? Yeah, no, that's wildly helpful because you're pointing out exactly where I feel like I'm struggling is like, I get really concerned with like the angles of everything, forgetting that like, it's more about the spatial awareness of it. Um, like I, I don't even pay attention to backgrounds when I'm drawing. Yeah. So. Um, and you know, like I'll, I'll do drawings all the time. Um, I'll, I mean, I'll do it very often where um, it's, it's only angles. Like that's, that's something I do constantly. So like there is a whole other way of, of laying in, but like, Again, like a demo is such a different beast than a um, painting that you're doing artistically on your own. Like it's a di it's a, it really is a didactic tool. Like that's what you have to see it as. So David LaFell, when he uh, does uh, portrait painting demos, he was doing one at the Metropolitan Museum. Mm -hmm. um, he only does portrait painting demos of men with beards. Like l literally, that's all he'll do. He won't draw or paint anyone else because like a young beautiful woman's face is like a very delicate thing where if the nostril moves it looks like I don't know it looks like she's like sneering um whereas a man with a beard is just there's so much chunky information to grab onto it's mm -hmm. super easy to paint so like that's what I would suggest for you is like um have have a category in your head where like I'll show you quickly how you could reduce her to just all straight lines. And, and I would do this, like, I mean, I work this way all the time, but you could just see her all in terms of angles, like absolutely useful, but it's going to take a whole lot longer to get to the place where this is a compelling form. Um, it's going to take a whole lot longer to get there than if you kind of like almost, uh, I'll say cheat. And you just go like this and you're like, bam, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and you just slam like information in all around it. And I'm not like, please forgive me if this sounds like I'm being a hot shot, but um, like I, I, I've received so many invitations in the past like two weeks, uh, sorry, two months from art groups all over the country. Like people are actually writing to me saying, Hey, would you fly out and be a part of this portrait drawing painting seminar? um this coming like october and it's in nevada and then i got invited up to rochester but it's like i have all these tricks <laughs> like and i've developed them over time where i never would go on stage <laughs> without like this in my tool belt where i'm able to carve things out quick and get a really compelling image quick um rather than slowly building up as i might do in the privacy of my studio so like um yeah, that's, that's my, that's my thought on it. Cause angles, seeing everything in terms of just angles is really, really a useful exercise. Mm -hmm. It's extremely useful. It's not like, it, in fact, you, you can't get too far in drawing if you don't correcting the neck that I never worked on. It's bothering me. <laughs> um, you can't get very far in drawing a painting if you can't see the angles. So like that is very useful. Um, so do you want me to keep pushing the drawing? Yeah, sure. Cool. So, and there's also another thing um, that I do 
um, when I'm doing a demo, I sacrifice likeness. Um, I don't have her perfect likeness right now. And, and I know it, like I, I, I see things that are off all over the place, but I really have to let that go for a while. And I have to, as best I can, just try to get the overall feeling of the thing. I don't even know if that makes any sense, but um, I was wondering what was going on with, I, I had another tool selected. It was like doing these weird transparency effects. Um, so like, I can't see as an artist, like I can't see the trees until I get the whole forest in. It's just, it's the way that Kevin McAvoy's always worked. Other artists aren't like me. Um, other artists can just go detail by detail and then arrive at the whole. Um, I wish to God that I were like that, but I'm not. But then I look at them and they can't see the whole picture sometimes in quite the same way that I do. So everything's a trade off. Mm -hmm. But I will sacrifice the individual facial details for the whole entire image. And then I return and I close back in. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, okay. Like the, on the underside of the chin, I'm definitely going to, I'm definitely going to let that be light over here. It's going to be much lighter. And then... As I go up, I really like the darkness of that upper lip. So these are things, if I knew I was going to be doing this in front of a group of students, I'd have that as a convention before I even walked in the room. I literally would say, okay, you're going to have a gradient from light to dark, where it's light under her chin, and I go dark. So I'm not hit by any curveballs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of dynamic looking. I actually... I actually think that looks pretty cool. Um, so, are you near a uh, train station? Yeah, can you hear it now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I grew up uh, right on Connecticut Park and the CI line, the Ronkonkoma line runs right through it. Yeah. And um, as a boy, like I didn't even know there was a train. Like it, it, I never heard it, but people would come over and they would think like that the world was ending because the train was right in the woods near my house. Mm -hmm. So the whole house shook violently. I didn't even know it was there. So it's like so used to it. And then hearing it in the background, it like brought me back to my childhood. It's like, oh. I live a block away from the Pat Jog train and uh, about a five minute walk from the ferry. So I get both ferry and train noise here. Yeah. Um, so that sometimes it keeps me up all night, but most of the time I just tune it out. But um, I know what you mean too, because like my great grandmother um, is from Oklahoma or was from Oklahoma. And when we would go there as a kid, it was so scary because in the middle of the night, the train went through her backyard wow. and it would take the entire house. And we were like, what is this? That's <laughs> crazy. Scary. Yeah. Yeah. And those freight trains go on forever. You know, like out in Oklahoma, they go on for like just hundreds of cars. Right. One, like one time when we were traveling, we got stuck at a light when a freight train was passing it. And I swear we were there for like 10 minutes. Yeah. When that train to pass. And like, it, it got comedic after a while. We were like, this is, this can't be real. <laughs> the funny, the funny thing about like Long Island is like the amount of people that get killed accidentally by like trying to, you know, slip through before the train gets there. Yeah. Um, and like, we don't even have a weight. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we have like a, what, like, okay, the train comes in front of you and you, at the most you have like a three minute like wait or something like that. Like if it's at a train station. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you see how I'm carving with a light now? Right. Now I'm coming back and I'm carving backwards. So before over here, um, over here, I was carving with the background. Now I'm carving over here with the light. So it, it's it's this back forth, back forth that I toss. I let I let like the two sides like kind of like in one side advances and then I come back with the other side. 
the other side advances, I come back. And it's, it's also for like people watching you. Um, it's really fulfilling. Like where it's, it's, you can, you have a lot you can chew on as a viewer <laughs> when mm-hmm. you see like that much information being tossed. So like, I really like developed all these things years ago, like, cause I started to do um, presentations at libraries where I'd go into a library like in uh, Eastport and I'd, I'd do a drawing demonstration there. Uh, sorry, a painting demonstration. And I did it wrong. Um, <laughs> I like went in and I moved too slow and there wasn't enough ceremony. Um, and I lost my audience. And I mean, everyone stayed to the end, but I knew, I knew what they were there for and I knew I wasn't providing them with the experience. And so the next time I was like, well, I just got to make it bigger, better, better. Um, I just got to give them more kapow. And I did. And I, I moved masses and I moved them quick. And as I did that, like the audience loved it. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. So that looks bizarre right now. But if I marry it to the rest of the background, it'll look less weird. I don't know. I might end up going dark over here, but, but you see me carve, I carve from the light, I carve from the dark. Mm -hmm. So this is very much a painterly drawing I'm doing right now. And I'll tone down the light a little bit. Okay. Um, all right, so now I'm running lines across and the tilt of her head, um, I have that like thing that I do, the top of her ear almost hits like her hairline. And so the mistake I made is the top of the ear is hitting like her eyebrow. So that's like a really common thing that I'll mess up on. The reason why that matters is because um, because the uh, tilt of the head is indicated by the height of the ear. It's, mm. it's all important where the height of the ear is. So obviously this is like a mega ear now, so I have to have to rope it back in. But I was, I was actually wondering why the ear wasn't working before. Um, not wondering too much, but you know, I, I was just like, oh, I gotta get back to that. Um, and now you can see how I'm going in with the mass and I'm just putting, my first foray into any shape is looking at the where the thing lines up. So the bottom of her ear is kind of at where the bone of her nose gives way to the cartilage, like thereabouts. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll just lay it in in kind of a smoky way, and I'll check it out. And, wow. Whoops. And so this is where the Russians they use their hands, or if they're painting, they use like like to to my eye again like how do i know what the russians are actually doing but like i've seen demos by russians on instagram and it's they they go in with um they go in with uh paper towels and the sides of their hands paint brushes because they really they're of the mindset like hey like i'm going to use every trick in the book mm-hmm. to get the effect of what i'm trying to do here and Americans like we're more like stupidly so we're like purists we're like I only use like you know I'm gonna use my brushes because I'm a classical painter and I'm gonna render the this thing into being it's like shut up like just whatever, <laughs> whatever trick gets you there um okay so now um I can tell that the ear is too close to uh too close to the eyebrow so it doesn't it really doesn't matter because I I carved I landed the heights successfully now. So to do an earectomy is like super easy. And there's the train. I'm telling you, it's like nostalgic. I'm like, oh. I'm close my <laughs> no, I love it. It's, it sounds, it's, it's like a sound like I like. You'll, you'll still hear it, trust me. It's just <laughs> not as amplified. So now you see how I moved the ear back so easily? Because yeah. I got the heights figured out. Like the heights, the heights were, were already established. So everything else like came so much easier. So now let's zoom out a little bit. Now the tilt of her head is feeling great. Like, um, I have more work to do right back here. And, 
as it turns right there. Um, and so I use the background and now I'm going to carve back in with the for with the foreground, the positive space, the negative space, the positive space, the negative space. And this is really what I teach students to do. Like, um, just really have them use positive and negative in still life painting in figure painting, um, in anything that they're working on. But, uh, but if you're not doing a demo, um, it is useful to not use positive and negative space um, for a while, just to strengthen your eye, just on linear terms. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna make an artistic decision here. Um, I saved this photo because one of the, it's just the most incredible, the line of it is amazing. But look at the small of her back and how it turns really, what we're looking at right back here is it's the back of her pelvis. It's a sacral triangle-ish area, like we're getting there. And so I really like that. So I'm actually gonna leave that really light over here, because that's like almost, that's almost the climax of the whole entire piece. Like it's a climax, it's, it's really amazing how she turns like so, so, like the upper part of her body right here turns really angular because this is her scapula. Mm -hmm. so this is angle angle and we should let it be angular because watch this we go angular here and then let this go super super um curvilinear but i think the calligraphy of that is amazing and then i'm going to go a little bit darker so i think that looks super cool mm -hmm. if our I actually want to paint this. I want to do an oil painting of her. Um, that's what I would do down there. I have like a spark of light down there to like really accent that moment. Um, okay, so jumping back to the face. Now, I want to make sense of what's going on behind her face. And I've been using the background to carve. So she has like the photographer was very clever when he snapped this because without that bit of hair, in front of her face, the whole photograph would have fallen apart. Um, we wouldn't have that striking contrast. Okay, so um, you see how everything is really cold and linear right now? Mm -hmm. This is the point in which, if it's oil paint, um, if it's acrylic, I, I have something terrible to say. Like, it's like really so much harder because if it's acrylic, you're kind of like locked in. You can't really go back. Um, there are obviously great acrylic painters out there. Jenny Saville is like one of the greatest painters ever. Um, so there are acrylic painters who pull it off. But for me, um, I would be getting a paper towel or something like that out. And I'd be going backwards now and softening. And I'm running literally over the positive and the negative space to undo some of the severity of this. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So trying to like knock that down a little bit and it's going to become more when you deconstruct it like this, it looks awful. Um, but then you, now I'm going back in with the background and I'm softening. I'm going back into the light and see how much softer it just became. Yeah. And it takes away from that drawn severity. Um, you can always refine these angles. That's it's not the issue is not um, losing the angles and then just being like, oh no, I lost the piece. Um, the issue is more so one of like you just don't want it to look like cold and academic. Um, so I'm coming back here, and um, I would spend on like the mouth alone. I would spend like a lot of time if I was painting alone. But, but again, I'm trying to paint this as if, as if I have a crowd. Um, so I'm trying to get more of a, an effect quickly. So There's this moment in the corner of our mouths. And for young people, it's always really soft. I'm not really in full command of my, this painting program. And so I put it in really sharp on accident. This this corner of the mouth is always impossibly soft. I mean, it's just so incredibly soft. And so you can go in and get that. 
really soft corner of the mouth moment. That's called the oral commissure. It's kind of a funny name. And I'm trying to just carve out her lip now. So again, positive space, negative space. Um, the lip has for a long time been feeling weird. So I'm gonna drop the line down from the corner of her eye and see where it sits. And um, I just figured it out. I drop a line down now from the corner of my eye and check it out. Uh, drop a line down and I'm like really, really off. It should be going through her lip. Um, but again, like the, the only way that I can see stuff like this is because I put in the background. And when I put in the background, it helps me see it quicker. Yeah. So now I have that. And her chin now feels like too feeble. Um, so probably her chin's gonna come down a little bit more. And so what I can do, Megan, is I can send this file, this uh, the photo of, of the woman over to you, and then I can send you a video of what we did today. And you can just replay it and like draw along. Yeah. And then we could check back in with each other. Um, and just, I'll, I'll push the drawing further or I can jump into a new drawing. Like it really just doesn't matter to me. Whatever is the greatest, like aid in like a learning device for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I would benefit from trying to, after watching it, trying to go along with it. Yeah. Okay. And you, like, again, like it feels like, it feels like it's cheating when you, when you have something like, but like I, I've, I've done portrait demos in an auditorium with like students before and um, in doing the, I, I pull people out of the audience, but, but I have a look that I'm going for. Like I'll pick like a, just a boy with like awesome, wild, crazy, hair like um i really pretty much like this is kind of a funny thing to say like i like painting black skin more than white skin because there's so much color um and i enjoy it more i actually enjoy the flesh palette way more mm -hmm. um so sometimes i'll just like go go into an event knowing what i'm looking for but i also know how i'm gonna light it i, I have like all these stock ideas already rehearsed in my head and I just find someone to match it. So like if you rehearse this and have it like in your system and then you pull it out as if it's, you know, the first time you've ever done it. Um, in my opinion, like then you're Paganini, like Paganini, um, you know, the story of him hacksawing the violin. Do you know that story? No. Um, so Paganini took a hacksaw to the strings of his violin. Um, oh, shoot, it's one o'clock. I, I, um, I, I have another lesson. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, don't worry about uh, it. Well, let me just text them so I, I, I don't wanna like rush so quickly. So I'm just texting them. Um, so Paganini took a hacksaw to his violin strings and while he was performing in front of the crowd, he was playing so ferociously that his string popped and then he moves on to, as he's playing ferociously, he moves up the string and then that string pops until he gets only to the E string and he's playing at the very, very top of the, you know, uppermost octaves. And it's hilarious because the crowd thought he was playing like such a demon. Like they said, he sold his soul to the devil. Um, they thought he was playing so ferociously that he popped his strings, but he just, he was performing. Mm -hmm. And like, that's a lot of, that's a lot of painting demos. Like it's, it really is performance art. Um, and obviously Paganini rehearsed that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. uh -huh. if, if he, if you literally hacksawed it the night before, 
he he knew what he was going to do when he got to the stage. Right. Um, I love that kind of thing. I actually think stuff like that is hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is artists. Uh, it's like somewhere it floats between entertainment and um, fine art. And I, it's just my worldview at this point as a 39 year old, young Kevin would have been like incensed by the insincerity of that. But <laughs> older Kevin is like, Hey, the audience, all of Paris the next day was talking about it. And they thought it was the yeah. coolest thing. Like, I'm like, cool. <laughs> all right. So it's pretty much like, in my opinion, what would be a good place to just lay that in a few times. Like, again, if you wanted to push this drawing further, next time we work together, um, we could, um, we could push it further by just taking it to a higher level of, of, you know, realism. But like, if it's a demo, you're really probably not gonna be able to get much further than I just did. Yeah. Um, n not you, like me, anyone. Um, so like, I think, several lay-ins, multiple lay-ins might be of more use to you than would be really highly rendering the life out of something. So mm -hmm. yeah, but I agree. You, you, you tell me though. <laughs> no, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, all right. I went a little too dark there. Um, all right. So with that, I'm going to send this file over to you. Um, I'm like, you can tell that I'm like a little, sad to leave the drawing. I'm just starting to like it. <laughs> <laughs>